Greetings, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how samskaras operate in the context of astrology. Now samskaras are the reason why people are born in certain families and with certain genetic conditions, a certain familial environment, and with a certain birth chart. Because that person is needs to live out those specific impressions that are on their soul and being born to that family at that place and time with that specific chart is going to maximize their ability to, to live out those experiences that their samskaras are dictating. And as I mentioned in the first video, samskaras are those impressions on our souls, the deep desires we have to live certain experiences that are modified by the actions that we do, whether the actions have positive effects on the fabric of reality or negative effects. So the samskaric impressions, they are giving us these certain uh, parameters for what our soul desires to live, and by being born at a certain place in time gives us the best chance to experience those samskaras. And those samskaras could be negative experiences, but in order for that, for that impression to be lived out and to, for us to be able to, as I said in, with the metaphor of the ceramic artist with the ball of clay, to mold out and work on those samskaras and to reduce those impressions on the soul to purify the soul and to remove the samskaras. So one way we can think about it is, let's look at the example of twins. And even if two twins are born just one minute apart, in Vedic astrology we have a technique or we have a chart, it's when you divide each sign into 60 divisions. Well that chart changes every 60 seconds. And so even persons born just one minute apart are going to be living, living different lives based on their raw chart data and the, in, the influences of celestial phenomenon because the chart is, is different from just one minute. So as we know, twins live very different lives. They don't have the same thought patterns. They don't have the same desires and intentions. Sometimes they move far away from one another. They don't do the same exact thing and think the same exact thing every single day, even though they have the same genetics and same family. That's because they have different samskaras. Those two unique individuals, those two unique souls, have different desires, different impressions, different needs that they want, or needs and desires they want to get out of life. And so even though their chart is nearly identical, so therefore we'd expect nearly identical results in their life, we don't see that. It's because their samskaras are different. But being born as twins, they have this samskara of wanting to be very close to another human being. And so they have the same genetics as the other human being. So that's one samskara that they have. Maybe in past lives they had a really close connection to that soul. So close that the impression on that soul was so strong with that other person that that samskara led to them being born as the same person with the same genetics, one egg split into two. So their lives are very united. But again, they're going to have other samskaras that influence them to do other things throughout their life. And other examples, a person would say they have a, a, a strong desire for power in their life. They're going to be born with a certain chart in order to be able to live out that, that strong de that strong desire that strong samskara for power so they're going to be they're going to be living in a chart that gives them the best opportunity to work on that samskara to satisfy that desire and those that whether that power that that need for power is going to have positive or negative influences depends on the person's choices that whether their past actions and karmas help bring about power uh, help bring about a positive uh, interaction with power in their life. And another really key element of thinking about how astrology works with samskaras beyond just being born in a certain condition to live out those samskaras is that we call planets in Vedic astrology grahas which means something that seizes or something that grasps to you. And so the planets are grasping us and pulling us into different circumstances and based on the samskaras that we have, based on the impressions on our soul that we need to live out. So 
those planets are bringing us into those specific situations. And our birth chart is showing us what kind of situations that those are going to be and how those situations are going to affect us on a behavioral level, how our habits are going to be uh, ingrained into us in certain ways. And so in astrology, when we're looking at a chart, we see, oh, this person has this specific situation, this specific condition where they could be mistaking uh, lovers for friends that are having strong desires to, to their, they want to see things happen in a certain way and they mistake their emotions that they have with emotions of other people, say for example. That is, comes from a past misunderstanding about how emotions are felt between different people that left a strong impression on them that in this time around they have a samskara for confusing lovers' emotions with friendly emotions and having strong desires to connect with other people that might not be beneficial for both parties. So as you can see, it can be modified in unlimited ways. And the way those planets are aligned up, it can cause innumerable variations about what experiences you're going to have. So the, the combinations are, are endless. Every moment in time, the, the sky is different. But, we're, but the takeaway is that we're born at a very specific time in order to maximize the potential for us to be able to live out those experiences that our samskaras are dictating us or that our, that our soul desires strongly to live out. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking about samskaras and what we can do and how we heal them and how to stop producing samskaras. Because the more, we, the more impressions on our soul that there are, the more desire-orientated we become and the more ingrained into material experience we become. But from a spiritual perspective, we not only need to live out the results of our samskaras and to live those experiences, but the goal is to stop producing these samskaras. And by stopping to produce some scars, we're then working on purifying our soul so that we don't continually find ourselves in this material trap of, of desire and wanting specific things to happen. We can become more, we become more loose in the way that we experience our life. We can live out experiences and we can be content with them and accept them without producing strong impressions on ourselves. And then what that means is not allowing our material life to, to affect our divine self to a profound way to the point that we're impressing deeper materiality onto our, uh, onto our soul's existence, our soul's divine existence. But we'll talk about that in the next video, so stay tuned.